and I have, as Jenny would call it, the social prowess of a goat. So naturally, he asked me to give a speech at his wedding. <laughs> JD and I go back as far as I can remember. Back to the days of playing in the sandbox, catching frogs in the backyard, making nachos with entirely too much cheese. And of course, the JD special quote, hey, if you ask my mom, she can't say no. <laughs> in just about every situation. One of my favorite memories was the day that Teresa let us make homemade pizzas, but gave us entirely too much power. The imagination of an eight-year-old boy in a stacked pantry. Needless to say, a lifelong question was answered that day. Marshmallows, honey, and barbecue chips do not belong on pizza. <laughs> now, JD, let's see how far you've come. From a boy in lake braces to a state trooper, and now a husband is incredibly inspiring. You've always been determined, and you let absolutely nothing stop you from achieving your goals. I can't put my finger on what it was, but the day I met Tara, I told my girlfriend that Tara was 100% the woman for you. I wasn't even shocked when Facebook told me you guys got engaged. <laughs> You've always been there for me, no matter what, no matter what happens, and we will always be brothers. Now, Tara, I just want to say one thing. I couldn't be more excited for you. I'm sure you've gathered that you're marrying into an amazing family. However, I promise you that Scrivens will continue to amaze you every single day. I wish the both of you a long, happy, healthy marriage. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Before I get started here, uh, can I have both sets of parents? Dave, Tracy, Dave and Tracy, could you just stand up for me real quick? Sure. A lot of hard work, a lot of time, a lot of effort goes into planning a wedding, executing the perfect wedding. So if everybody could, let's give a round of applause. To you. Sorry to tell you this, but the evening prayer every night, 
Hayden likes to mention Tara before you. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, it's just how it is. But when I, you know, I met Tara, you, we met her there at the pumpkin patch that day, and uh, you could just see it in JD's eyes. You know, I'd never seen him so relaxed, so just without a care in the world, and it's a credit to Tara. So thank you, Tara. And I know you have a brother, but just so you know, you've got another one now. So if you need anything, you just let me know. Whether it be whooping up on him or what, you just let me know. <laughs> so JD, <sighs> if you haven't gathered by now, we're brothers. Um, I am the older brother, in fact, but if you were to stand up right now, you wouldn't think that, because I've got to look up to him. <laughs> Having a younger brother's great, and anyone in here with siblings can probably attest to that, you know, at least for me growing up. Um, I always had someone to blame stuff on. You know, if I was gonna get into trouble or something, how can I blame this on JD? How can I get JD in trouble instead of me? In fact, uh, JD doesn't even realize the amount of times I actually was just trying to figure out how I could get him in trouble. Um, there was a time we had a friend over, we were in the backyard and uh, playing baseball, and our friend, he, he and I drive right into Dad's truck, spider webbed the windshield, and although neither JD or I had actually done anything wrong, uh, I was just instantly in my head, how can I get JD in trouble? How can I blame this on? My friend doesn't need to be in trouble. How can I make JD in trouble? So JD, it's a testament to you, my friend. You had to put up with quite a bit growing up, so the way you turned out today, credit to you. <laughs> so obviously, we're brothers. We have lots of similarities. Uh, charm and good looks, right, Mom? Yes. That's right. <laughs> like typical brothers, obviously we fight, we argue. Uh, lots of similarities. But, you know, there's one thing that it's, at least, it's always stood out to me. Um, that JD has that I absolutely don't. Uh, and that is a absolute mental toughness like no other. A few weeks back, uh, I was sitting eating dinner and I got a call from my mom and he said, or she said, uh, JD's been in a car accident. Froze. Didn't know what to do. Didn't know what to think. Lord willing, everything was all right. He was good. Uh, and even after she had explained that to me, um, I didn't, I was frozen. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what I should do. So I left the house. We went and met JD and Tara, mom and dad, back at his place. Uh, and on the way there, I just kept thinking, you know, what would I have done in that situation? In a car accident, uh, everything going on around me. I'd have been scared. I, I'd have froze. I don't know what I would have done. And as we sat there that night, JD recalling the story for us, there's something that just it resonated with me um, as he was explaining how everything happened. In pursuit, guy comes through the intersection, hits him, propels him into a light pole, and shoulders out of socket, can't move in the car. And all he's thinking through his head is how do I get out? How do I make sure everyone's okay? And how do I finish the job? How do I help my team finish the job we were doing? I can tell you from my standpoint, there's probably a lot of people in here that would agree with me. I wouldn't have done that car accident, getting hit by somebody <coughs> propelled into a light pole. That's not what I would have been thinking. Not this guy. So JD, I commend you. I couldn't do it. I may be your bigger brother. I may be your older brother. I may be able to whoop you from time to time. <laughs> but just so you know, I will always look up to you. And I'm proud of the man you become. Cheers to J.D. and Tim.